Good morning from Tel Aviv. Uh, we are very happy to start this uh, international discussion uh, and we are very privileged to be joined by two experts from Singapore. Uh, they will introduce themselves in, in a minute. Uh, we are here to discuss fintech, but more specifically, how it affects SMEs. We all believe that SMEs are the main generator of economic growth in the future, but of course they also face the challenge of the disruptive nature of fintech all over the world. So um, if I can just ask you first, gentlemen, to introduce yourself and say a few words about what you do. Uh, Mr. Varun Mittal, can you go first, please? So uh, I am one of the founding members of Singapore Fintech Association, and I manage partnerships for Singapore Fintech Association with global fintech hubs like Tel Aviv. I'm also uh, heading fintech for Ernst & Young for all of ASEAN. So I manage all the fintech projects done by Ernst & Young in 10 markets of ASEAN. And uh, we're privileged uh, to be talking to you guys and sharing what we see across fintech market for SMEs uh, in the recent times. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Hockley, Chair. Yeah, um, I'm Hockley. I'm the founding president of the Singapore Fintech Association. Uh, my day job, I'm the head of digital office in uh, NTUC Income. NTUC Income is a composite insurer in Singapore. So, um, uh, happy to share the Singapore experience on FinTech with all of you. Thanks. Thank you. So, I'm Shmuel Bentovim. Uh, I chair the International Committee of the Israel Directors Association. But in my day business, I also am quite involved in the FinTech industry, mainly by raising funds internationally for the Israeli FinTech industry, which is, as you well know, thriving and uh, having a, a big uh, a fingerprint all over the world. Uh, I would like to ask you first to address in general terms uh, how disruptive is fintech for the SMEs uh, all over the world? And I mean both SMEs that are already in the fintech business, but also SMEs in any other walk of life and, and industry, how this revolution uh, affects them and maybe how does it create new opportunities for them? So, uh, Varun, can you please start? Sure. So one of the key aspects is uh, suddenly all these SMEs, uh, which no one used to talk so much about, are talk of the town. So one of the good parts of all the, I would say, attention towards FinTech is now it's much easier for these FinTechs to attract good talent and capital because everyone wants to get into, into the game. They have a lot of experience, they have connections, they have been doing this for a while. So from that perspective, this attention helps them grow further. Uh, the challenge which comes for, comes along with that is a lot of new uh, entrants into that industry, which uh, come from a very different, I would say, and many different competitive advantages. For example, when you have e-commerce companies, when you have uh, different kind of spin-offs from traditional industries, going into this sector. So how do they compete with these new competitors? Uh, because earlier the amount of competition was limited. The attention brings resources and competition both. So I'll say it's it's a blessing if played right and uh, some challenges if not played well. Okay, please. Yeah, uh, SME is a very important uh, sector for Singapore. Uh, it contributes about 50% of the GDP and employs about 70% of, uh, of the population. So I think uh, I, sh I agree with uh, Varun and I think the key challenge of SMEs is that a lot of them are not aware that there are fintech alternatives uh, to the traditional banking. And then of course, uh, sometimes right, uh, the banks uh, might not uh, be able to serve them uh, effectively. And then uh, that's where uh, a lot of the fintech solutions are very suitable for them. But there is a, a challenge of uh, uh, awareness of all these uh, options to them. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can try to be more specific because as we know, fintech is a huge area. And I think we can maybe analyze the effect of 
subsectors within fintech, such as payments, crowdfunding, maybe blockchain. Can you believe more specific which part of fintechs affects more effectively the SME world? So one of the one of the key key areas where they have seen action is, is uh, because most of these companies do not have huge history, do not qualify for the lending processes from the traditional financial institutions. So the P2P lending platforms, the equity crowdfunding platforms have opened a segment which was never open. Uh, they have generated so much opportunity. Even if you look at Singapore, we have at least eight P2P crowdfunding companies which have been now regulated by MAS and they can get a loan as fast as 15 minutes uh, from one of the platforms. Within, within one day, they can get loan among most of these platforms. While traditionally, they would either not get it or they would need a collateral, which they would not have. So lending is one huge piece. And second is, uh, I would say, out payments. So the biggest, another big challenge for them is uh, their payment volumes were quite limited. So the access to treasury solutions, uh, payroll, expense management, these kind of outpayment solutions, they did not have it because they would not qualify the benchmarks of the traditional financial institutions. While a fintech company is happy to sell a service at $9 a month, $10 a month, for a bank, it probably might not uh, make sense uh, to st start selling services at that price point. So uh, the outpayment, and lending would probably the two most, uh, I would say, areas of disruption where SMEs are enjoying the attention and are able to get good services at cheaper price. Thank you. Okay, what is your view? Uh, like uh, what uh, Parun said, right? Uh, a lot of the SMEs do not have uh, a lot of uh, manpower resources to look at what are the best uh, financing solutions to them. And hence, uh, although there are fintech uh, alternatives to them, whether is it uh, supply chain financing, invoice uh, financing or equity-based and uh, debt-based uh, crowdfunding, they are often uh, not aware of all these uh, options. And then the other challenge is that uh, quite a number of them do not have a long uh, history of operation. That uh, pose a challenge for them to get uh, uh, funding from the tradition, traditional sources such as from the banks. Yeah. Okay, let's ask about the other half of the glass, you know, the empty one. What kind of solutions do you think fintech should be preparing, maybe particularly for SMEs that are right now missing from the market? Maybe Hockley will start uh, this time with you. Yeah, okay. uh, Hockley, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, for the SMEs in Singapore, a lot of them uh, they are in the import and export business. So uh, cross-border fund transfer is cross-border fund transfer and remittance is one of the, the key business activity, and uh, there are a lot of uh, fintech solutions that uh, actually use the blockchain as a as a means to to make uh, the whole process uh, cheaper, better, and in fact faster. So quite a number of our member companies are actually providing uh, cross-border fund transfer at uh, one third the normal rate that charged by like uh, the likes of uh, Western Union and it can be done within the day. And then the, the, uh, the other thing is that uh, supply chain financing is something quite new to them and especially like uh, trade, is, uh, trade in uh, Asia is actually booming now. And then the ability of uh, getting cash flow in time is important. So there are some innovation in supply chain financing which I think the SMEs should be more aware and can uh, use them uh, more uh, effectively. Yeah, over to Barun. Thank you. Yes, Barun, uh, please. Another area is uh, a cloud-based treasury solutions because these SMEs do not have as much experience and skill set in doing uh, cash flow prediction, uh, deploying excess cash for short term. And uh, these, for example, if an SME were to try to do national pooling while uh, ha operating a business in multiple countries where payments are coming in from multiple currencies, they would not get that service from a financial institution because they would be making less than $100,000 uh, a month. Uh, so if fintechs can create, uh, I would say, bite-sized package or low-cost packages uh, for SMEs, 
they would open a huge segment uh, where how do you bring enterprise grade solutions to SME? So it's very similar to how enterprise grade security antivirus solutions were brought to consumers, where some firms said that, okay, here's another segment which would also be happy to use it. They really need it. They probably cannot pay as much. So how do we build something uh, more customized suited for them? So treasury would be my big bet for uh, like what can be the next, uh, next killer application for SME. Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, I think that everyone would agree that one of the benefits for the SMEs is the entire world of e-commerce, which really gives a small business the access that maybe before could be, could, uh, be afforded only by the large businesses. Um, how do you see this uh, area developing and what kind of fintech solutions can help you know, mitigate the risk, which is naturally uh, in international transactions between SMEs and other challenges of, of the business. Um, Varun, please. Sure. Uh, so one of the large challenges is how do you build cross-border escrow solution? Because most of the existing solutions are uh, very, very expensive for SMEs to use. So the choice they have is either go with banking channels or with go with some large multi-billion corporations with, who will force you to use their payment plus their escrow or dedicated escrow. So how do you build, I would say, maybe a blockchain based escrow or third-party escrow, P2P based escrows, which they can use to guarantee that they will get the money back. And probably they could back it with uh, some level of smart contracts, which will automatically execute and trigger those payments once their delivery is done or 48 hours after the delivery of no objection is made. So, uh, so those are the kind of areas which would be uh, of interest and of value to a large, large number of SMEs for cross border. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So uh, while in, while e-commerce uh, allow the SMEs to uh, sell their solution to the whole world, but uh, the, the there is a challenge of like. Uh, whether the, the other party is is going to pay. And so I think that uh, the ability to do uh, fraud uh, analytics is important. And then the other thing is that uh, while through e-commerce, a uh, merchant can sell a lot, but there will also be challenge of the timing of the cash flow coming in. So in this respect, invoice financing using FinTech will be a very attractive solution for a lot of the merchants because if the credit terms are 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, right? It might not allow the merchant to be able to, to uh, monetize their cash flow and then uh, sell more products. So resorting to this kind of uh, fintech uh, invoice financing solution will be a, a good option for, for the merchants. Thank you. Uh, one of the newcomers to the fintech space is InsureTech, uh, introducing new technologies into the insurance business which is widely recognized as even more uh, traditional and conservative than the banking industry. Uh, what kind of effect do you see to new developments in InsurTech on SMEs? Varun, please. Uh, I mean, how I can speak a lot about how his company launched uh, an SME insurance for cybersecurity, but one of the other areas is uh, how do uh, they go after group insurances? How do they go after ensuring the business against the risks. So uh, the risks faced by uh, SME business are very different from the ones faced by large businesses. So even small scale disruptions can uh, create huge problems. So how uh, they could uh, get insurance for all their employees at a cost effective way, how they can look after things like, okay, if this software price increases, and that's an insurance against that. So insurance against inbound cost, insurance against all the other factors which which are a risk to the business. So uh, the key value of the insure tech solutions these days is they have figured out ways to put price on risks which were there, but no one was willing to put a risk, put a price on that. Using advanced analytics and connecting it to another other data sources than the traditional data sources, they started to put price on those resources. And uh, that's something which is adding a lot of value to how SMEs can manage their risk. So 
insurtech is more for smes is more about how do you do effective uh, effective scalable risk management in their business thank you hoklay yeah like uh, what varun has shared right with uh, the popularity of uh, e-commerce uh, a lot of uh, cyber risk uh, will be there and then the, that's where SMEs can protect themselves with uh, cyber risk uh, insurance. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with more trades cross-border, there's a need for trade credit insurance to protect against uh, default by the other buyer. And one of the interesting development is that nowadays, right, trade credit can also be uh, tokenized into a smaller bite size and then the risk being spread out to more insurer. So these are a few of the interesting development that actually makes uh, uh, InsurTech, uh, SME InsurTech available in a very innovative way. Thanks. Okay, we are about to uh, end uh, our, this uh, wonderful session. If there is any comment, any of you would like to add or something that we have not touched on, uh, please do. The uh, one thing is we would love to host all of you in Singapore for the Singapore FinTech Festival, which would be held from 13th November to 17th November this year. This would be world's largest FinTech event ever with 30,000 people. So as Singapore FinTech Association, we would love to host you guys to come explore ASEAN and help you whichever way we can for you guys to build an effective bridge with ASEAN. Looking forward to see a few of you in Singapore in November. Thank you very much for this kind invitation, Hoklay. Yes, same thing. Uh, we actually have a 40% discount code available to, to all friends of SFA. So uh, if uh, you are interested to get a ticket uh, at 40% uh, off, please uh, send an email to uh, hello at singaporefintech.org. We will extend the discount code to all of you. Thanks. So thank you so much for joining us. I think it was a very, very fruitful and informative session. I'm sure our audience enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you in Israel very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.